Coming up on this edition of Sports Paws, the men's soccer team takes on the Loyola Greyhounds and the Holy Cross Crusaders. We have a sit-down interview with sister athletes Jamie and Jordan Pellucci. And some exciting news coming out of the TD Bank Sports Center. Sports Paws, coming right at you. Welcome to the newest edition of Sports Paws. I'm Andrew Badillo. And I'm Connor Voss, here to bring you all the exciting news in Quinnipiac Bobcat sports. While we may just be freshmen, we've already seen our fair share of sports in the first few weeks here at Quinnipiac. And there is much more to come. We begin with the team looking for their first win of the year. The men's soccer team took on the Greyhounds of Loyola, Maryland this Wednesday for their first game at home. The Bobcats are coming off of consecutive ties on the road and are looking to earn their first win of the season in the first of four straight home games. The Greyhounds, on the other hand, look to ride the momentum of wins from their last two games. Will Eric DaCosta and his squad finally be able to start a winning streak of their own? We go down to the field where the Bobcats took on Loyola Greyhounds on wet. Well, Captain Simon Hine warms up pregame for the Bobcats, while on the other side, the Greyhounds of Loyola get pumped up for the start of the game. Early in the first half, Loyola sends a free kick into the box, which goes off the head of a Loyola player and saved by Borja and Goita. He had seven saves on the game. Later in the game, Larry Unjock, remember that name, comes tearing up the right side and centers. The ball is pass left and shot, but Borja with the good positioning falls on the ball and makes the save. Later again, Loyola with the attempt, Stephen Dooley brings up the ball and passes to Connor Thompson who puts in another good centering, which is deflected, but an incredible save by Borja and Goita is cleared. Finally, an opportunity for Quinnipiac, as Marshall Baker dribbles up between two defenders, turns right, rips it, but unfortunately the scoreboard is not the goal. It goes out of bounds, and we go to the second half. Free kick for Quinnipiac now goes into the box and off the head of a Quinnipiac player, but outside right. Later in the game, Loyola with a chance here. The chip shot goes in between two players, and remember his name, Larry Njok comes up the left side, shoots left, goal for Loyola. They go up 1-0. Now dial D for desperation for the Bobcats as Stevenson Hawkey throws in the middle. The header goes wide left and out of bounds. One last opportunity for the Bobcats. Hawkey again with the throw in. There's a scramble in the middle, and Justin Cody shoots, but the ball goes wide left of the wide open net. And Loyola goes on to win 1-0. The Bobcats fall to 0-2-2 on the season, while the Greyhounds move up to 3-0-1. Quinnipiac took on Holy Cross later in the year. And now we are joined by our own Arthur Balin. Arthur, nice to have you here. Thanks for having me on. All right, now Arthur, the offense seemed to be struggling and had problems mounting any offense attack. What do, must they do to increase their goal output? Well, the Bobcats need to get more shots on goal. The Bobcats registered 17 shots in the game against Loyola, but only three were counted as being on goal. You have to hit the goal if you expect to score. And if the Bobcats are able to get more shots on goal, they'll start to see their offensive production go up. All right, so Arthur, I have a question for you now. How much longer can the team rely on Borja and Goita? I know they've been struggling to score goals this year. What do you think on that topic? Well, I mean, the offense does need to help uh, 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 by Goita and create more goals, just give him a little bit of more goal support. But, but the backfield has been fantastic for the Bobcats as of late. The, you know, they've given so much support uh, for... Um, for uh, the, the entire team, they've been able to really support the, back, the, the offense and really giving them a lot of uh, opportunities to get more offense production. Well, with all that in mind, the men's soccer team continues the search for the first win of the season as they take on Holy Cross. The Bobcats taking on the Holy Cross Crusaders at the QU soccer field. Teams lining up in midfield along with the referees as they look to get things going, Bobcats huddle up, looking for their first win of the season. Stevenson Hawkey begins early on in the game with a cross, but Marshall Baker comes up limping on the play. He would have to call the trainer out on the field as he would come out of the game as well. Ola Unjobi would sub in for him, and a few minutes later, 
guess who would go down with an injury? It would be Ogan Joby as Ryan Schneiderman would replace him. Moving on to the second half, we have Bobcats uh, player Rafael Carvalho dribbling around, making something out of nothing. And then Justin Ward with the goal, but you can see a look on his face. It is disallowed because of offsides, keeping the score zero to zero. Ward, however, would, have, would try to have his redemption, making something out of nothing. Shoots on goal, and holy cross, what a save by goalie Michael Thompson, keeping the game level zero to zero. Holy cross would have their opportunity to score. Nice cross, nice header into the back of the goal. However, the story was the same for Holy Cross as the goal would be disallowed due to offsides. We move along in the action. The ball is cleared out to the middle of the field. Quinnipiac corrals it, and player Ashton Pett would kick it into the hand of the Holy Cross player, giving the Bobcats an opportunistic penalty kick late in the game. Co-captain Simon Hine would have the opportunity, and he would bury it into the back right corner of the net, giving the Bobcats a late 1-0 lead. Holy Cross would have trouble responding late in the game, the waning seconds. They would have one last opportunity. The cross through the middle, deflected out of bounds for a Bobcats goal kick. And that would be the story. one nothing Quinnipiac as they earn their first win of the season. And we are welcoming back Arthur Balin again. How big has the defense been thus far? for the Bobcats, especially with the lack of goal scoring. Oh, I can't say enough about the defense. It has been so important for the success of the Bobcats, especially in the Holy Cross game. Especially in the second half, the, the defense did a fantastic job keeping the ball in the Holy Cross half, which led to opportunities for the Bobcats. That handball was the result of a fantastic pressure by not just the defense, but the attacking part of the team as well. So that just it goes to show you how pressure was so important for getting that goal for the Bobcats. Okay, now on the offensive side of things, only Marshall Baker and Simon Hind have scored for the Bobcats this season. Who else has to step up for them to be successful on the MAC this year? Well, quite frankly, it has to be a group effort. Marshall Baker has had 14 shots on the season. Simon Hind has had 13. The next highest shot taker has four. Clearly, they're trying to use Simon Hind and Marshall Baker as their biggest offensive threats, and that will not be won't be feasible. Uh, for the long term because that is becomes makes the offense very predictable. They need to spread out the shot totals and sort of make the entire team be involved in the offensive process because quite frankly we saw Marshall Baker get injured that's the breaks of a game so if you, you can't rely on Simon Hyde and Marshall Baker to keep up the offensive attack it has to be a group effort. All right Arthur thank you for joining us. Right, thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you very much Arthur. Our very own Darnell Raglan had a chance to talk to junior forward Marshall Baker about the start of the men's soccer season. Hi, I'm Darnell Raglan, and here I have with me junior Bobcat forward Marshall Baker. How you doing, Marshall? I'm fine, thank you. All right, so um, I read that you grew up in Jamaica. Um, how is it like living there? Living in Jamaica? Well, it's, I guess, not very easy, but had an okay family and the weather is very hot, just like what we're experiencing right now. So I'm kind of used to the climate that we have. Like, not the climate, but the temperature right now. All right, um, how'd you get into soccer and uh, what do you love about it the most? How did I get into soccer? Well, Jamaica, we only play soccer. When you're young, it's either track, but mostly soccer. So like every kid grew up playing soccer and I just was one of the better ones, I think. And I just love the, the passion that the fans bring to the sport. And my family loved the sport, so my father loves the sport. He used to play, so I think his passion came into me. So that's how I love football. All right. All right um what was it like? I read that you um, played for the Corville Club in Jamaica. Um, what was that like and what's the difference between playing with them and here at Quinnipiac? Well, the Corville was, um, was my childhood club. It was in the neighborhood that I grew up in, but they treated me like I, I was born there. Mm -hmm. And they loved me and they always encouraged me. My coach always encouraged me to go to the next level. And he always ensured that 
it wasn't only football and that my education was the key to success. So I guess Corville was at the stepping stone. And um, do you think it's a bigger challenge moving from the NEC last year to the MAC now, the MAC conference? Well, I think though, I heard that the MAC is a better conference. We don't really know about the MAC teams because we've never played a MAC. Oh, we played Loyola and they won the MAC. So based on that, I think, I think we could do well in the MAC. In comparison to the N NEC, I think the MAC is better because it's like team that will compete every week. So every conference game we have to, is like a final for the MAC. Men's soccer midfielder Simon Hine was named College Sports Madness Men's Soccer Player MAC Player of the Week. Hine had four shots in the Bobcats' loss against Loyola. He also scored the lone goal in Saturday's win against Holy Cross University, leading to the Bobcats' first win of the season. When we come back, the women's golf team looks to improve this weekend at the Dartmouth Invitational, and our own Tom Albanese introduces us to two Quinnipiac athletes with something very special in common, their genes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden, your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Women's Rugby suffered their first loss of the season this week falling to the Norwich Cadets. The final score came out to a 41-5. Maggie Miles had the lone try for the Bobcats, saving them from a shutout. The loss is the Quinnipiac's second in their last 19 games. The Bobcats return to action this Tuesday against Harvard. The women's golf team traveled to Dartmouth University this past weekend to play in the annual Dartmouth Invitational. On the first day, sophomore captain Jen Whaley led the Bobcats, shooting a 2 over 74, while the team as a whole placed fifth. The Bobcats hope to improve as they go into the second and final day of the tournament today. We mentioned earlier in the show that you will be introduced to the, interest, to the two interesting Quinnipiac athletes. They are sisters Jamie and Jordan Pellucci. Jordan is a senior on the softball team, and Jamie is a freshman on the women's volleyball team. Our very own Tom Albanese has a story. Meet Jamie Pellucci, a freshman on the Quinnipiac women's volleyball team from Lake Mary, Florida. After choosing QU for playing volleyball, she became part of something unique. She joins her older sister, Jordan Pellucci, and they are one of a few groups of siblings at the university. Jordan coming here played a huge role. Like uh, in high school, you start the recruitment process very early, so that like, can lead to like many options. But I remember coming up to visit Jordan when she was here, and I even remember talking to her like about like making her decision. I kind of like I knew that this is what I wanted, and. Um, in the, like the fact that it is so far away from home, but I would have my family here. That kind of like, it played a huge part. Other siblings at Quinnipiac include Connor and Kellen Jones, who are both on the men's ice hockey team, and triplets Amanda, Brianna, and Christina Foss on the women's cross country team. Those siblings play for the same team. As for the Pellucci sisters, they play different sports. Jamie plays volleyball, and Jordan is on the softball team. I think it makes it easier that we play different sports because we're and our majors are far far enough apart where we can we can go an entire week and not see each other at all, or we could see each other every day if we wanted to. It kind of makes it a little more uh, special, like when I do catch her in the hallway or in the training room, or just like instead of like always being together, it makes it you know nice. Back in November 2010, when Jordan was a freshman at Quinnipiac. She was given an opportunity by former head volleyball coach Robin Sparks to play in the team's final game of the season that year. That was hilarious. It really was. Um, we were just in fall practice one day, and, and uh, coach was like, uh, you know, she, I think she pulled me and Courtney and, and Jess aside and was like, hey, uh, you guys played volleyball before, right? And we are like, yeah. And she's like, okay, why don't you go, why don't you come over here and talk to someone? Um, so then it was Coach Sparks, and, and she was like, they were basically just said they're down on injuries. They needed people to just 
sit there and be a backup in case someone else um, got hurt. Only the future will hold if new softball head coach Jill Kurowski would give Jamie a call to play softball. If the opportunity did come up, Jamie definitely would want to do what her sister did. Most definitely, I would be out there. Despite playing different sports, both Jamie and Jordan always find the time to hang out and be with each other around campus, and they are as close as ever before. We're just lucky enough that we're really close and we have a really strong relationship as sisters. We mm -hmm. always have. That's just our family dynamic. Uh, we were raised that way with all of our siblings, and uh, it's just we're lucky enough to have each other. And, um, you know, not only she's my sister, she's one of, like, my best friends. So that's nice. Aww. Both ladies are looking for high expectations for each of their team's first year in the MAC conference. Tom Albanese, Q30 Sports. The women's volleyball team split their four matches in the Lafayette Lehigh Crosstown Tournament. The Bobcats earned their first two wins of the season, defeating both St. Francis of Brooklyn and Morgan State 3-1. The Bobcats' two losses came against Lafayette and Lehigh, with both games ending in a three-set sweep. The Bobcats are now standing at 2-8 and eight on the season. They will take on Holy Cross this Wednesday. The field hockey team visited Easton, Pennsylvania this Friday to take on the Lafayette Leopards. The Bobcats are coming off of consecutive losses and are trying to get their second win of the season. But those hopes were gone early as Lafayette scored only 10 minutes into the game. The Leopards would not look back as they went on to win the game 3-1. Senior forward Casey McCree scored the only goal for the Bobcats. The Bobcats will head up to UMass Lowell for their next game on Tuesday. When we come back, we'll take a look at the week that was in Quinnipiac women's tennis and women's soccer, and we'll also talk about some exciting news coming from the TD Bank Sports Center. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden, your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. On Friday, the women's soccer team traveled to Vermont looking to win their first game of the season. The game was very defense heavy from the start. The two teams only had 10 shots on goal combined. The Bobcats outshot the Vermont Catamounts 6-4 but were unable to score. Vermont's Haley Marks scored the single goal in the 40th minute as the Catamounts went on to win 1-0. The Bobcats have not scored a single goal in three straight games. The women's tennis team made some noise this weekend as they hosted the Quinnipiac Invitational. Senior captain Mary Chupa teamed up with freshman Kelsey Oliphant to claim the Flight B doubles title. Chupa would also advance to the Flight C Singles Championship, but would fall in straight sets. This week we're bringing you back an old segment we like to call Tweet of the Week. Here's what Caitlin Mayo found in the world of social media. Hi, I'm Caitlin Mayo with your Sports Pause Tweet of the Week. This week's tweet comes from Quinnipiac Athletics. The tweet says that Quinnipiac women's basketball team has been selected third in the 2013-14 preseason coaches poll. Last season, the Bobcats played to a 30-3 record and won the NEC championship, earning an NCAA tournament berth. Quinnipiac begins its first season in the MAC on October 27th when they play the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. USCHO.com's Joe Connor ranked the TD Bank Sports Center as the second best NCAA Division I ice hockey arena in the Northeast. Connor traveled to 13 different schools over the 2012-2013 season. He described the bank as, quote, awesome, saying that the student section was pretty wild, too, end quote. Some good news for all of us here at Quinnipiac. QU was named U.S. News and World Report's best up-and-coming university in the North Region in its 2014 edition of Best Colleges, released this past Tuesday. This is the second consecutive year Quinnipiac has been given this prestigious honor. Here's what we have to look forward to up next week in Quinnipiac Athletics. On Wednesday, men's tennis will go up against St. Francis and men's soccer will host Army. On Friday and Saturday, women's golf will compete in the Yale Women's Intercollegiate Golf Tournament at the Yale Golf Course. And on Saturday, women's rugby will host American International College later in the week. Field hockey will play Vermont and finally, volleyball will take on Fairfield at Burt Con Court. That about wraps it up here. Did you enjoy your first show, Connor? 
Because I, I know I did. I certainly did, Andrew. I had a great time here. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Q30 Sports. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at the Q30 Sports. Until next week, I'm Andrew Badillo. And I'm Connor Voss. Have a great night, everybody.